Hello everyone, my name is Anish Sharma and you are watching Kubernetes web series. If you are new to this channel and wish to learn Kubernetes from the scratch, then you may click on the i button at the top right hand side for the Kubernetes playlist. I added the Kubernetes playlist URL in the description also. Just for information, this PowerPoint document can be downloaded from my GitHub page. Besides this, subtitle for different languages such as English, French, Russian, and German are available for this video. Today we are going to cover one interesting topic that is what is namespace. So agenda of this video is understanding the namespace. What is namespace? Initial namespace. Where we can use namespaces. How to create the namespace. How to add quota with namespace. And then at the end we will do lab. So the first topic is understanding of namespace. Let's suppose we have two teams in an organization. One is development team. And the second one is operation team. They are sharing one Kubernetes cluster. In the development team, they would like to maintain a space in the cluster. However, in the operation team, they would also like to maintain a separate space in the cluster. In the development team, in this space, they want full access. It means they can list the pod services and other resources. Besides this, they want create and delete privileges so that they not only build the applications but also delete or modify it. On the other hand, in the operation team, some people need full access. Some engineer need only read access. It means restrictions are there. Who can create or modify the resources and who can only list the resources? Inside the namespace, we can apply this restriction with the help of RPAC. This can be achieved by partitioning the Kubernetes cluster into namespaces, development and operation. Please bear in mind that development team must not see the resources of operation team, same as it is operation team must not see the resources of development team, as both are different teams. Let's understand with the help of 3D animation. We have one cluster and resources available for us is 320 GB hard disk, 32 CPU and 128 GB RAM. First, we create the namespace called development and assign the quota 20 GB hard disk, 2 GB RAM, 2 CPU. We can create one pod inside this namespace and assign the quota. Further, we create a new namespace called operation and again create a new pod inside this operation namespace. Both the pod cannot see each other because of namespace. Namespace provide the isolation of resources. Now the next topic is what is namespace as per the Kubernetes official documentation. So in Kubernetes, namespace provide a mechanism for isolating groups of resources within a single cluster. To elaborate more, if we can create a pod and mention the namespace development then this pod can be visible only inside the development namespace. Namespace of resources need to be unique within a namespace, but not across the namespace. To explain more, we can create a pod with same name. However, if we use the namespaces, then we can create a pod with same name, but obviously under two different namespaces. So we can create pod one in namespace one and pod one in namespace so name can be same of the pod or objects, but it should be in different namespaces. Namespaces is a virtual cluster that used to make it easier for large team to work. Namespace based scoping is applicable only for namespace object that is development services etc and not for the cluster wide object that is storage class nodes persistent volume etc. The third topic is initial namespace. So if we execute the command kubectl get namespace or kubectl get ns, it's a short form of namespace. We will observe these four namespaces. Default, kube node leases, 
cube public cube system these are the default namespaces provided by kubernetes when we create the kubernetes cluster let's elaborate these namespaces so we have four namespaces cube system default cube node lease and cube public inside this cube system kubernetes system create the object under this namespace such as all the master nodes components are the part of this namespace only in default when we create an object such as pod deployment without specifying the namespace then these kind of objects created under default namespaces in cube node leases this namespace hold lease objects associated with each node node lease allow the kubelet to send heartbeat so that control plane can detect node failure and cube public this namespace is readable by all clients including those not authenticated this namespace is mostly reserved for cluster users in case of some resources should be visible and readable public throughout the whole cluster the public aspect of this namespace is only convention not an requirement so our fourth topic is where we can use the namespaces here i will show you some most common used cases where we can use namespaces grouping of resources we have one kubernetes cluster and create three namespaces monitoring dashboard and load balancer we add grafana and prometheus in the monitoring namespace mariadb sql mysql databases are added in the database namespaces ingress hpa added under load balancer namespaces in short we can say that we can segregate the application with the help of namespace second would be when we have multiple teams so let's suppose again we have a cluster one is development team and the other one is testing team and the third one is production team development team will create the objectives objects like this and testing team is creating their own objects and production team is running the application in the live environment right with the help of namespaces we can virtually separate the cluster third would be when we have 3p and production in the same cluster so this is again we have the kubernetes cluster so here we have 3p pre-production platform and the other one is production platform so inside this 3p we can test all the objects if everything is working fine or maybe we can do the pilot phase here and everything is working good then we can implement in the production platform so here within one cluster we can have the pre-production platform and product production platform right so how we can create the namespaces so this is our fifth topic we can create the namespace with the help of yaml file or from the command line from the yaml file we have this yaml file so we have api version v1 and then we have a kind equal to namespace in the metadata field we have name of the namespace that is development from the command line we can use the command kubectl create ns and then namespace name that is operation very simple command straight forward some more information about the namespaces we can execute the command kubectl describe ns operation to get more details about the operation namespaces we can also execute the command kubectl get ns operation hyphen hyphen show labels to show the labels and how to check all the resources created inside one namespace we can execute the command kubectl minus n operation get all so this time we are using minus n or we can use full form hyphen hyphen namespace operation so it will get all the objects what are running inside this operation namespace it will list out so how to add quota in namespace in order to apply quota we need to create resource quota in the yaml file we are creating resource quota and one can observe the kind is equivalent to resource quota under the metadata field we have mentioned the name of this resource quota that is pod hyphen low you can name it as per your requirement 
this resource quota is being created under operation namespace. We can create max 2 port CPU 5 and memory 10 gig. It's just a glimpse of resource quota and here I'm trying to show you how to apply resource quota with namespace. I will cover this topic in separate video. We can apply the resource quota at port level also. Here is the syntax in the YAML file just for your reference. If a container requests a resources, Kubernetes will only schedule it on a node that can give a that resource. Limits, on the other hand, make sure a container never goes above a certain value. If this port utilizes more than 500 MIPS or CPU consumption is more than 500, then it will stop. I will use this YAML file in the lab so that you will be understand from the error message. When we try to create third port, I will get the error message because of resource quota of the namespace, not from the resource limit at port level. A practical lab is available for this video. So let's do the lab. I have logged into my VM, kubectl, get space. As you can see here that four namespaces are there. This is what we had discussed in the theory part. We can also get this NS. Hyphen hyphen show labels. We can also see the labels of these namespaces here. As you can see here that same name and same labels are there. Let me clear the window here. Let's create one namespace with the help of YAML file. So this is the file that I'm going to create here. And there's only just four or five line max. The name is development. It is created. So let's check. Yes, it is created here. If I want to sh see the labels here, labels is this. Okay. So this is the one way. Let me create one more namespace called operation here. So kubectl create ns and then operation. It is created. Let me execute this command again here, and now you can see this operation is there. Why it is showing name equal to production? Because in the YAML file, I mentioned labels here. Okay, so let's create some those quota here, and then we will create the pods, and we'll see if this resource quota is stop working me or not. And after that, we will check the these ports are visible to other namespace. Create one file here, resource quota dot yaml. As I said in the theory part, I will cover up this topic in separate video. So here we are just going to discuss the resource quota, how we can apply the resource quota with namespace. That's it. Resource quota here. And it is created here. How you can check, you can use get command or describe command here. Use is here and hard is here. Okay, so let me create one pod. Pod iPhone quota one dot YAML file. So this is the YAML file I'm using here. Everything is nothing new here. Pod quota one namespace is operation here. So this port will create inside this operation. This port will create inside this operation namespace. And here the new thing is resources. Request is this and limit is this. So the limit is hard limit. CPU 500 mm. kubectl create minus f pod quota 1 dot yaml. It is created. Let's create a new port. Port quota dot two YAML file.
here I'm using port quota to name and rest of the other things are all are same. So let me execute this command again with file two, right? Now, if I create the third port, it should give me the error message. Why? Because we can create two port only and right and here we have already consumed two used as two. So let me create a third file here. So it should give me the error now. Yes. Now I can see the error here that port equal to two limited port is two. So this is what we are getting here. Memory is used this, but our hard limit is two. So this is the reason it is giving me error that you can spawn only two port here. So kubectl get port. If I execute this command here, I will see nothing. No port is running here. Why? Because I have not mentioned here my namespace. When I use this minus an operation, I can see that my two ports are running here. Same as it is. If I I use this one no resource are available here and let's suppose that you are working on here if you want to work only on this namespace in some scenario people are using only one namespace so they have to mention each and every time their namespace to get the resources so in some scenario you want to use only a specific namespace and you want to set so you don't want to give every time a namespace Right. For that reason, you can use this command kubectl config set context hyphen hyphen current hyphen hyphen namespace equal to operation. When you execute this command, now if you execute new kubectl get ports, you will observe the ports which are running inside this operation. Now what I did here, I just use this operation as a namespace as a default config. So this is how you can achieve this thing. That's it for today session. And if you like this video, please share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Bye bye.